Gentlemen, start your engines and may the best woman win. RuPaul, arguably the world's most famous drag queen, and has sparked an explosion of interest in the drag scene, including in Glasgow. Uh, tonight on the BBC Scotland channel, you can meet Mother Tucker's uh, drag queens of Glasgow, and amongst them, Lawrence Cheney, who's one of the stars of the show and who's with me in the studio. Good well. Welcome, Lawrence. Hi, Kate. Thanks for having me on your show. Oh, I'm delighted. Andy, you're <laughs> clearly a RuPaul fan because um, I heard that intro and you were mouthing it absolutely perfectly. Mouthing it. I love that word, mouthing. Yes. Mouthing, lip who needs <laughs> lip syncing? Who needs lip syncing? Yeah, RuPaul is like, I, I think RuPaul single handedly has started this huge craze for, you know, straight people in this mainstream society to to want drag, to to know that they need drag. So it's it's amazing that, like, even you knew what it was. I, I was shook. Well, shook. I have to say, my <laughs> eldest daughter is a huge RuPaul fan, and I actually, as a treat after her exams, bought her tickets to the Ru- RuPaul drag race, which is coming to Glasgow. Oh. So we are oh. very familiar in our house, I have to say. And there's a spare ticket, and I said, well, oh, I'll so come with you. Yep. Yep, <laughs> she doesn't mine. want me to go with her, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, so was it RuPaul that... Got you into it? Um, it was really, I think, uh, growing up, my mum was a big fan of, you know, uh, comedy shows from the 70s. That was when she kind of grew up. So she was a big fan of Stanley Baxter, Dick Emery. So oh, I always knew of drag as this kind of comedy way that you would uh, just kind of uh, emote and, and, and make funny situations out of and, and all this stuff. But it was really RuPaul when I saw RuPaul's Drag Race for the first time when I was like 14. That was the first time that I saw, wow, like you can be beautiful mm. and do drag, you know, and have and still be funny, but not have it be, oh, it's funny because that's clearly a bloke. You, you know what I mean, you know? Yeah, well... Yes, yes and no. I mean, I'm fascinated by it because, <laughs> um, and I speak to my my daughter about this, and I ask really stupid questions. So, you you you're a bloke, yeah. Yes, a bloke. Yes, I, and and you're happy to be a bloke. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I noticed in some of the the press for Mother Tucker's Drag Queens of Glasgow, which is on tonight, and looks great. In fact, I could see it there. It's on at ten o'clock tonight on the BBC Scotland. Yes, um, get that plug in. Channel. Yes. Um, but in the the promotion for it, you know, it was saying, you know, how much, of course, Glasgow and Scotland has moved on, and mm. that forty years ago, um, it was illegal to be gay. Oh, yeah. In in Scotland, and that we have changed so radically. But it was making such a strong attachment with the gay community, the LGBTQ mm. community. Um, is that indivisible I mean do you I'm going to ask you do you have to be gay to be a drag queen absolutely not I think anyone should be able to do drag I just think you know we're in this you know gay people sadly and trans people you know my trans brothers and sisters we're in this you know place where in society we are looked down upon already so for us it's not a a step down the ladder and going oh well uh, if I do drag people are going to hate me and call me these things on the street. We already get called things on the street. So for us, it's less of a a, a worry because we already get it. But I think with straight people, you, you know... Um, that they're maybe a bit comfortable. I'm speaking, of course, for the whole straight community. But no, no, no. You know what yeah. I mean? You have um, to generalise a bit. Yes, the conversation. of yeah. course. Um, but um, I, I think everyone should try. I know, like, a, a handful, but I do know a few straight drag queens that try it and their girlfriends love it. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't impact on their uh, personal life or anything like that. But you just have to be... Uh, very in touch with your your inner self. You know, you can't be hiding anything from yourself. So tell us a bit more about your character uh, mm-hmm. when you go out on stage um, and describe your outfit for us. If you would, though, I have to say, folks, um, we, we have got some good shots of, of Lawrence, and we'll put them on our Facebook page. Yes, please, so please. I need you, the love. You, you can see it. <laughs> um, but tell us, tell us a bit more about you when you're on stage. Yeah. Well, right now I am wearing a, a kind of lady of the manor outfit. Yes, you're very uh, day ins- wear today. Yeah, it's inspired by the whole, you know, these kind of the two fat ladies that cut the head off and be done with it <laughs> kind of ladies. Uh, and I made it all myself. I made the blazer. Did I made you? the fascinator. Well, let me have a wee look. Yes, have a look at my you, trousers and everything. You made this? Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Oh, yes. Got your... 
it's that him and really everything. Good. Oh yes, oh yes. Um, so I made it. Uh, I knew I was coming here, so I wanted to do something kind of Scottish and represent Scotland quite well. So, um, but my whole drag persona, uh, I, I don't have a character. You know, when the wig comes off, it's not like it's not like a switch. But it's definitely, you know, for example, you guys want to speak to Lawrence Cheney. So Lawrence Cheney is here. You know, I think it would be a bit weird if I was sat here, you know, my scummy clothes and my, you know, my my jeans and stuff. Mm. I I think um, it's something I take from one of my idols, Lady Gaga, is she'll just go out in a crazy look because that's what people want to see, you know, regardless of how good it looks or how bad it looks. But um, I I do comedy uh, and and comedy is a huge influence in, in my life. It helps you get over loads of things you know we know this but um i really want to take comedy into a mainstream audience and i think with rupaul's drag race you know it's been shown that it can so i i would love to do so that so could you have potentially i mean what, what age are you learned i'm 22 you're 22 so you're kind of starting out in life and deciding what direction you want to, to go in <laughs> yeah. um so could you have decided to be a more kind of classic uh, stand-up person or you always wanted to incorporate drag you, you know, it was when I was a teenager, I was uh, in school and I'd always be like the class clown and jokes and stuff like that. And that would be the way I'd deal with bullies and stuff like that as well. But um, I, I, I think drag gives me the confidence because the, the amazing thing with drag is if someone says, you look fat or you look uh, like this or like that, you can say, well... I'm wearing padding. You know, everything is mm-hmm. uh, everything is fake, essentially. So what someone says to me about my outer appearance does not matter. So it doesn't really hurt. Um, so even if tabloids say something or people in the street say something, I don't go home and cry myself to sleep because that's not about how I look. So uh, is it that you have created a persona... Mm-hmm. And they are, if they are being uh, insulting, they are insulting the persona as opposed to yeah, you, Lawrence. Absolutely. I mean, this is the thing: is even doing stage shows and comedy, and even this, we're all, you know, we're personas. You put on a wee, you put on a wee barrier, I mm. suppose. Um, you want to show vulnerability and stuff as well. But if, if anyone does hurt you. It, it, it can hurt on, on varying levels, but it allows me to kind of turn off. It allows me to desensitise from the hateful comments and stuff like that. Because really, if if all you can really insult me for is the way I look uh, and, you know, a joke I made, that that's not really... It's not mm, really the core of you. First world problems, you know. You know what I'm saying, you know. Mm. So the the makeup, presumably, did you make up yourself? Yes. I yes. mean, your makeup is absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Um, Thank you. How do you? How did you learn to do that? Really, YouTube tutorials. I mean, mm, you know, it's amazing, the, the it? age of millennials. Mm. Um, but uh, it's it's YouTube tutorials. I, I would sit down at night and play around with makeup, and at that time, it'd be like these cheap pan stick makeups and stuff I'd have no clue what I was doing but I'd you know try and sketch out the shapes and do all that you know all this kind of madness and then just kind of settled on what look I wanted to do um and and just kind of fine-tuned it so it's I've been doing it four years so it's kind of fine-tuned now right. let's hope and and so <laughs> what's the, the the family reaction when you know you started expressing an interest oh, in, f- in this oh my family love it I mean my mum has has RuPaul's <laughs> albums you know, my mum's a huge fan of divine you know so i mean very luckily you know i I grew up in a family that that was not a problem Mm. um but it's sad i think the documentary even highlights that it still is a problem and it's not it's not as as clear-cut as a problem of you know oh you're gay get out but it's it's so it's tension um sometimes but i'm very lucky that my my family are so good and they they can't believe i'm here talking to Kay adams they can't believe you know it's 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 Who's amazing. got no makeup on <laughs> well no I, I heard about your uh, eyelashes though what day 5 oh, now no, we're still on day 5 day what do you five. think I think they're they're not, they're not as big as mine, but um, <laughs> they look good. They Thank look good. You. Oh, you're very kind. You're very <laughs> kind. So, do you have a a persona on stage? I mean, do you have a different name and everything, or no, are you Lawrence Cheney? I, I'm Lawrence Cheney. So, it, well, 
Uh, my real name is Lawrence, but uh, the Cheney comes from the 1920s silent movie actor Lon Cheney, oh. uh, who was known as the man of a thousand faces. So I feel I am the queen of a thousand faces. But I like that not everyone gets that or clicks on to it. Mm. They either think, you know, Dick Cheney or, or someone yeah, else. Yeah. Um, or, or they think it's my real name. I quite like that because you need to ask me where it's from, you know? Yeah. So if I was to meet you um, at, you know, a drag club and you were sort of in the zone, mm -hmm. would you be a different person? Not not really. I, I wouldn't, I, I don't talk differently. I'm, I'm probably a bit more humorous, a bit more outlandish and stuff, you know, um, but I'm, I'm pretty down to earth. I know a lot of people switch their voices and do all this kind of madness, but I, I I I like the realistic approach. I think it's I think it also helps with, you know, me trying to get into the mainstream uh side of things. I think it helps that I'm being uh, quite genuine and, and realistic as well. I think it's easier for people to kind of understand. And so what's the career plan then? Well, the plan is, my dad said, aim for the, the sun. And even if you get to the moon, you'll, you know, get somewhere. <laughs> um, but I really want to have, you know, Netflix stand-up specials. I want to be touring the world. I want to, I, you know, I want your daughter to know me. And, I, you know, I want all this... Um, I want people to understand drag and understand my humour and I want people to realise that I am a drag queen, yes, but I'm telling funny jokes. I am not the funny joke. Like, I just look like this and I'm glamorous and all this madness, but what I'm saying is funny regardless of whether I'm, you know look feminine or look not, you know what mm. I'm saying? Um, and, and you want to appeal to a mainstream audience. You don't want to appeal exclusively to a drag audience. I, I mean, it, it, it does no harm, obviously. That's that's where I'm at now. Um, and I think you can still do both. Uh, but there's a certain, you know, um, there's a certain uh, level that you need to kind of uh, find yourself at for the kind of mainstream, straight, heteronormative world to get you. Whereas if, if someone's doing something that's uh, like um, very kind of club kid-esque and uh, something that's kind of gender neutral, I think it's harder for people to understand in their heads. You know, we're, we're not far away from people understanding, but but that's why RuPaul looks like RuPaul mm. rather than like changing you know, his makeup and eyebrows up to his forehead and all this stuff. That's that's why RuPaul looks like that is because he needs your daughter to get yeah. him, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, it's been such a pleasure having you here. We'll oh, thank get you a wee for selfie having me. here and we'll have to oh, compare yes. our eyelashes. Yeah. You, know, just to, <laughs> you can borrow to see. them. Okay. Can no, bo I, I couldn't hold them up, for <laughs> God's sake. Um, but let's give you a little plug again. So that is on tonight at 10 o'clock on the BBC Scotland channel. It is uh, Mother... Mother Tucker's got to yes, be very yes, careful Mother on the radio, live yes. radio with that one. I have Absolutely. To say, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Drag Queens of Glasgow starring Lawrence Cheney. Thank you.